Hey everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. This is your look at October 17th through 23rd, 2022. Um, I can't believe it's almost the end of October. But here we are is actually almost Scorpio season, which is actually a bit bizarre. But uh, this week we have the last week of Libra season. I will <laughs> remember to do the Libra today. I, I, apparently the last couple of times I keep blanking on um, talking about Libra and the Libra horoscopes. I am so sorry. Um, but yeah, it's the last week of Libra season, maybe because my mind is already ahead of things, not because I'm a Scorpio, but because we're going to have eclipses starting on October 25th. So just a week from now. And that's one of the things that we have to talk about because the week before the eclipse, and honestly, this has been probably a little bit before, time gets weird. We're in that sort of interstitial space between two different chapters. Uh, we are closing out a chapter that began on April 30th of 2022 with the solar eclipse in Taurus. Now we're closing that out, and then we're going to be starting a new six-month chapter on October 25th when there is a solar eclipse in Scorpio at two degrees. That's what we'll talk about next week. But we have to get prepared. We have to understand a little bit about, about what eclipses are. This is a little bit of a sneak pre sneak peek of my eclipse webinar that I'm doing um, on October 22nd, so just this Saturday. And as always, you can still register to get the recorded video. Uh, I know a lot of you do that because, you know, we're in a lot of different time zones. So as always, if you are watching live, just say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And even if you're not watching live, I know a lot of you, you say to me, I feel like I know you when you show up for my client sessions. And I'm like, yeah, it's weird. We're actually talking. But yeah, where are you watching from? How are you navigating this eclipse season? And it's not just an eclipse season. And this is what's a little bit different than the eclipses we had six months ago. We have Saturn square Uranus, which we'll talk about. Um, Saturn turns direct this week. That's sort of the major marquee event for this uh, this week's astrology. And as it as it does so, we have a major check in with a three year story. And one of the things I love about Saturn, this is actually something that I'm talking about in my Saturn Masterclass. We're five weeks into our 12-week program, and it's really about getting into the different elements of what forms our life, whether it's the sign, whether it's the actual elements in astrology, fire, earth, air, and water. But all of these elements and all of these signs and all of these energies talk about how time unfolds. And that's really what Saturn is. One of the things Saturn is, yes, it's the planet of lessons, but it is also the planet of time. And eclipses, they are also these planets, or not planets, they're also these new and full moons, uh, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse that mark time in our lives. And so we have sort of this intersection of Saturn and Uranus, the eclipses. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> How are you all doing? How are you again navigating this <clears throat> eclipse season? So let me reintroduce myself. My name is Katie Sweetman and I am an astrologer and psychic medium here in the New York City area. And every week we gather live uh, to talk about the astrology. And something that you hear me say over and over again is that the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. But eclipse season reminds us of the part that's not us. And, and I know sometimes we want to think that we can control everything, but we can't. We can't control time. We can't control the seasons, but we can control how we show up. So this is a pivot point this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes it's the energy that makes me cough. So it's it's not that um, I'm sick. It's just uh, there's a lot of a lot of energy going on right now. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of things happening this week. So of course, we have a lot to talk about. And um, we'll we'll dive in. So Again, shameless plug, we're doing an eclipse webinar. I do this every six months to show you why eclipses are so important. 
this Eclipse webinar. Um, you can find it in the show notes. You can find it on my website. Uh, you can still register if you can't make the 12 p.m. Eastern live recorded webinar uh, on Saturday, October 22nd. It will be, um, um, what was I going to say? It will be recorded. I said that, but it will be two hours. That's what I wanted to say. It'll be about two hours. I think I keep telling people it's going to be an hour and a half, but who am I fooling? There's just way too much to talk about. Um, and why eclipses are these powerful markers. And despite maybe people's anxiety about eclipse season, do keep in mind that eclipses mark time. They mark the start of something, the start of a relationship. They can portend a marriage or the birth of a child. So it's it's not these negative things. And I actually moved on, <clears throat> on an eclipse, which wasn't my intention, but I was like, I guess we're leaving Brooklyn because I, I chose, unconsciously chose to do it on an eclipse but it was time that's the thing what astrology teaches us is that it's time so let's uh talk about the astrology of this week for october 17th through 23rd 2022 i feel like that's got a bit of a cadence to it so First, on Monday, October 17th, the sun, which is in Libra, it's rounding out its time in Libra this week, it's making something called a trine to Mars. So this is something that we're going to talk about, not this week, but next week and a little bit after. Mars is in Gemini and something that you maybe remember me saying back in, I don't know, August, that Mars was going to spend seven months in Gemini. That is a typical Mars typically will spend five or six weeks in a sign. So when it leaves on, what was it, March 25th, 2023, that's a long time for Mars to be in one sign. That's because Mars is going to turn retrograde on the 30th of October. That said, the Sun and Mars, they support each other today. It gives us a little bit of an energetic start to our week. Then we go into tomorrow, October 18th, and Venus, just right behind the sun in Libra, it picks up a, uh, a trine to Mars as well. Venus and Mars together typically have this sort of sexy reputation. It's flirty, especially Venus is in Libra, Mars is in Gemini. It loves sort of like to, to talk and speak and chat and like, you know, kind of turn on the charm. And maybe that's one of the ways in which we uh, make a romantic connection, but we can't forget the fact that both the Sun and Venus are making aspects to Pluto this week. So it adds a little bit of a magnetic energy to our social interactions this week. Uh, this is the thing about Pluto. Pluto is one of three evolutionary planets in astrology, at least it's just the way that I see it. And the evolutionary planets are Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Pluto does its evolutionary work, meaning it wants us to grow and evolve by showing us the, let's say, less than helpful aspects of something. So how do relationships evolve? Well, relationships evolve because we have to look at and sometimes feel what's not working. Obsession, manipulation, power, control, uh, perhaps not the most uh, supportive energies in relationships. So Pluto is saying, oh, you want a healthy relationship? You want a healthy connection? Here, I'm going to show you exactly what's in the way. And here's the thing about Pluto is that it holds a mirror to us. And that's not always easy. And it's very easy to, let's say, project uh, something that is unhealed within us onto somebody else's, onto somebody else. Oh, it's not my fault. It's their fault. So we all have to look at ourselves this week. Everybody has to look at themselves this week. And that's the thing about Pluto energy is it gives us an opportunity to turn shadow into light, to take something that maybe is less than helpful and to transform it, reform it. And that's the thing when we are doing things unconsciously or even subconsciously in relationships, then our relationships are not at their highest level because we're being ruled by instinct and we're being ruled by our emotions and sometimes our less than helpful emotions. So the sun makes a square to Pluto on October 19th. Um, 
That's correct. And then on October 20th, Venus makes a square to Pluto. So it's sort of this undercurrent of what's happening this week in advance of the eclipses. Now, the solar eclipse on October 25th, so that's Tuesday of next week, it's in Scorpio. So this is a little bit of a technical point. First, I use traditional rulers. So yes, Pluto is what's called the modern ruler of Scorpio, but it, it sort of has an affinity, um, you know, this sort of jealous obsession that Scorpio can be uh, famous for. But rulership is about energy and it's about the structure of energy and the hierarchy of energy. Again, I told you it's a technical point. So what, what I was going to say is that even though we've got this Scorpio uh, new moon on the horizon, we're going to start to feel this energy of Scorpio, uh, transformation, rebirth, reformation, facing ourselves, decay. I realize that's a strong word. But look at the weather right now, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, the sense that the, the natural world is starting to decay, the nights are getting longer, it's getting colder. Again, it's a little bit of a Northern Hemisphere perspective. Uh, the veil is a bit thinner, it's spooky season, and Halloween is just uh, a couple weeks away. It's no coincidence, Day of the Dead. Um, all, all Souls Day uh, on, the, on the 1st of November. So we, let's say culturally, and perhaps even as humans know that this is a very particular time of year when we have to start to honor the people who have passed on and sort of understand that life is finite. I realize it's still Libra season. And so we're, st we're in that edge. And so there's a little bit of a blur you know, and sort of this evoking of Scorpio as we have these Pluto aspects this week. But for me, Pluto does not rule Scorpio. Um, so the other thing that's happening this week on the 18th is that Mercury, which is back in Libra, I think as of last week, it makes an opposition to Chiron. This is a, you know, a little bit of a, let's say, undercurrent to some of our experience this week. Uh, Chiron's not very overt, even though it is an opposition, because Chiron works on a little bit of a subliminal le level. It's these deep pains and these sometimes traumas and these pain points that keep coming up in our lives. And so maybe there's a pain point this week. Chiron's in Aries, Mercury is in Libra. It's a dynamic that's happening on a relationship level. You know, the, the courage and the bravery to have a hard conversation, the courage and bravery to heal something, to make different choices, to let go of the past. That doesn't always happen so easily, but that's just want to put that on your radar because there is this dynamic with Pluto and Mars and Chiron this week, and it's bringing us into that last chapter of Libra season. Um, then we go into the weekend and the Sun and Venus make their, uh, well, I was gonna say annual, but I think there was one in January, um, almost annual conjunction. Um, so the Sun and Venus, they're making a conjunction at 29 degrees of Libra. So that's the very last degree of the sign. When we reach the end of the signs, this will be in this case, the 22nd of October, it's sort of this, what have we learned at a, a space in a sign? 29 degrees of folk Saturn. It's a sense of commitment. Something needs to take shape and form. We have duties and responsibilities. The bar is set higher for us. And maybe after we went through some pretty sticky Pluto aspects this week, you know, Saturn is saying, okay, what have you learned about relationship? Speaking of what have we learned, uh, on Saturday, October 23rd, Saturn turns direct in Aquarius. It actually turns direct at 18 degrees of Aquarius. And so why am I saying what have we learned? So Saturn is the planet of lessons. I said a few moments ago, Saturn's a planet of time. Yes, time, lessons, karma, aging. I say to people, especially my students in my Saturn masterclass, we are, as long as we're here in a physical body, we are under the rules of Saturn. Time, karma, aging. Can't get around it. That part is not on us, the 50%. We can't control that part. But we can age gracefully. We can exist in time, hopefully peacefully, not always. Uh, and... Um, 
we have to work on our karma, but that's, that's a choice. So this week, Saturn turns direct. And last time Saturn changed directions was June 4th, turned retrograde, uh, I believe is at 25 degrees of Aquarius. So these are two points in time that are linked, even though they might not seem obvious uh, right on the surface. And so this is your work is to pay attention to see how are these two dates, June 4th, um, October 23rd, roughly linked in time. So Saturn, despite its reputation, talks about how time unfolds, these structural points in our lives. And while Saturn has been in Aquarius since 2020, we've had these very structural points while Saturn turns retrograde, direct, retrograde, direct. When it does this dance, even though it's it's doing it more slowly than, let's say, uh, the personal planets, um, we're building something. We're learning lessons. We're making commitments. We're seeing what works and what doesn't work. Like I was talking about with eclipses, you know, eclipses has this little bit of anxiety around it, but that's the thing. Eclipses herald something, the, the a marriage, a baby, a, a, a move, something else. Um, Saturn is similar. Saturn is saying like within this sort of time of the eclipses, how do things take shape and form? Each and every one of you, even if you're scratching your head and you're like, Katie, I'm not an Aquarius. I know. But you have Aquarius somewhere in your astrology because you have all 12 signs of the zodiac in your astrology chart. And Aquarius governs one part of your life. This is the whole thing about structure and rulership and time and sort of the rules of astrology. Anyway, this is this is the stuff that if you want to learn astrology, you have to learn. So Saturn is saying it's time for something right now. Um, and this is the last time that Saturn is changing directions in Aquarius for 30 years. I know, 30 years. Because Saturn is now wrapping up its time in Aquarius. Uh, Saturn takes 29 and a half years to go through the zodiac signs. And so what have we learned? What have we learned since uh, Saturn arrived in Aquarius at the end of March of 2020? Yes, March of 2020. Saturn was just a preview from March to July 1st of 2020. It went back into Capricorn. And then on December 17th of 2020, Saturn went back into Aquarius. And so from December 17th of 2020, all the way until March 7th of 2023, Saturn's in Aquarius. Yes, Saturn spends nearly three years in a sign. And during that time, life is trying to take shape, take form, take root, get us to do our work and learn our lessons while Saturn is in that sign. So if you're in Aquarius, perhaps you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're a Leo, for example, Aquarius is your relationship sign. So that area of your life has needed work. Maybe there's been the start of a serious relationship. Maybe it's been the end of a serious relationship. Maybe you're like, wow, I need to work on my relationships. I have no relationship. So this is where Saturn is really pushing us and pulling us throughout, uh, you know, it's time in Aquarius to learn about in the sort of the broader sense of Saturn in Aquarius, society, humanity, social systems, social causes, um, what connects us all as human beings, what divides us all as human beings, our sense of connection, our disconnection, our distancing over the past few years, our relationships with our friends and our community. How has that shifted? I realize this has been paralleled with COVID, but how has that shifted over the past few years? And then Saturn says, this weekend, what have we learned? How is the bar set higher, for example? But then that, you know, that's that last stretch until Saturn finally leaves Aquarius on, uh, again, March 7th of 2023. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is that Saturn turns direct in a nearly exact square to Uranus. So in 2021, we had three squares between Saturn and Uranus. And something that I was saying last year is that it's like we have one foot and a new life and one foot in an old life. And you're like, Katie, I hated that feeling. Let's, let's stop that. And I'm like, I know, but Saturn retrograded back to within one degree orb of Uranus. And while 
it's not an exact square it's pretty darn close so we have saturn pivoting in a square to uranus we have the eve of a solar eclipse the solar eclipse and even a lunar eclipse on november 8th that's going to activate this energy and maybe we feel like we have one foot in a new life and one foot in an old life again that sense of things pushing and pulling i think the hardest thing about the fact that this is happening in um, what are called fixed signs is that the things that were locked and rock solid back in 2020 are perhaps not so rock solid. Maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a career, maybe it's where you live, maybe you made a big move in the past couple of years, maybe family and home is not the same. Maybe people have passed, maybe you've gotten married, maybe you've you made some big change in your professional life. So there's been these major milestones the past few years, but milestones that have been, let's say, in, in alignment with major awakenings, breakthroughs, transformations, things turning upside down. Thus is the energy of Uranus. And Uranus is another evolutionary planet. I was talking about Pluto uh, earlier, and Uranus does a little bit differently than Pluto. Uranus tries to break us out of things that are not us, that are keeping us, you know, imprisoned in a way. Uranus demands evolution. It demands radical authenticity and sometimes by any means possible. So things can leave our life that at first feels like a shock, but in hindsight, we can see that it, it opened something. It took us out of something that maybe wasn't for our highest good. Maybe it sent us in a new direction. Maybe it opened our eyes. So it's bumpy astrology this week. Um, I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a heads up. And as always, even when the astrology is bumpy, we still have to take care of our ourselves. We have to take care of our human bodies. We have to take care of our spiritual bodies and even our emotional bodies. So, so take care of yourself this week. High stress astrology needs kindness and compassion it needs us to be anchored and grounded because it's it's intense you know it's time is real and it's how we live time and sometimes time isn't always easy especially as things happen to us or perhaps even happen to people in our lives so that is your look at the astrology of this week let's do a little recap of where this is unfolding in each of the 12 zodiac signs so at first we are starting with aries aries so recap saturn is in your 11th sign of friends and communities social issues social causes maybe you are more socially aware over the past few years, maybe your friends and community are actually very different than they were uh, at the start of 2020. Saturn can be a little bit brutal when it comes to friendships. It will just go through your friends list or go through your phone and just start deleting people. It's not easy. The reason why it's not easy is because Saturn can be very black and white about what is working and what is not working. Does it have the bond? Does it have the connection? That's the thing about, let's say, Saturn ruled Capricorn um, opposite Cancer, which is ruled by the moon. Even though these are two signs that are opposite, it reminds us that relationship needs emotional bonds. It needs emotional connection, emotional investment. So things that don't have that sense of strength, you know, maybe they have broken apart. In the past few years it hasn't been easy that then saturn has been in a square to uranus uranus is your second uranus is in taurus taurus is your second sign of money and income so there's been this push and pull perhaps about money and sort of your how you think it you know shapes your life or shapes your world your relationship with money and society and social issues social causes but also value and worth and this could be your value with your friends your value with your community and the other thing is that saturn is a career planet for you so i say this as saturn turns direct um, on the 20 on the 23rd is that maybe this is a time where it's not just a structural point around friends and community it's a structural point around your career and maybe something has to break through. Maybe you need to do something in your professional life differently. Maybe you need to reach out to your professional community. 
do a little bit of networking. But it's a bit of a stressful point, and this all is in advance of next week's solar eclipse and Scorpio and sort of opening up this time where you're doing a lot of deep emotional work. Lastly, uh, Aries, don't forget that Mars is your planet. Mars is in uh, Gemini. It's going to be in Gemini until March uh, 25th of 2023. Um, so this continues to be a very busy time. And with Venus, um, Venus is a relationship planet. And maybe a lot of things are coming up with relationship this week as Venus gets some energy from Mars, but also gets some energy from Pluto. So take a deeper look at relationships and see where maybe it's not about the other person. It's about you. Taurus. Oh man, Taurus, uh, you're on the cusp of an eclipse and this eclipse is going to be in your relationship sign. So maybe you're seeing a lot of shifts and moves and changes, almost like, uh, you know, the, the chair is being rearranged and prepared for the next chapter of your life. A chapter that's going to take six months. And, and honestly, Taurus, this chapter is part of a chapter that's been unfolding since 2018, 2019, May 2018, March 2019, when Uranus first went to Taurus. That's what I think is a little bit the hardest thing about this. It's like it's not just an eclipse, Taurus. It's an eclipse with Uranus. It's demanding that you grow and evolve, get out of your own way, get out of things that are maybe you have a little bit of a hold on that just aren't supporting you anymore. That said, Saturn is turning direct this week in your career sign. And I want you Taurus to go back to 2020 and reflect on what, what sort of work and structure and building and things taking shape or breaking apart what's been going on in your professional life because the idea is that when saturn leaves aquarius in march of 2023 you know what you want to be when you grow up of course every taurus is going to have a different answer to this what do i want to be when i grow up but the last two years almost three have been about building your professional life even if it's not career per se, it's about your professional or let's say your responsibilities and duties in the world. So this has been such a big time for you, Taurus, and it's sort of pushing and pulling at both you and your relationship with your career, your relationship with the world. And Saturn turning direct is basically saying to you, okay, show me what you got, Taurus. You've spent, you know, since June, going in, reflecting, uh, you know, doing the 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 review and then Saturn's going to go direct and it's going to go direct and be direct all the way into March. So it's a structural time, uh, Taurus, a time when things ironically are want to take form, but then also want to break apart and go in a different direction. And this is all in advance of next week's eclipses. Um, Gemini. Gemini. So you're not, let's say, feeling these eclipses in the same way that everybody else is, or even feeling Saturn in the way that everybody else is. But for you, and we've been talking about this, I think probably for the past uh, year or so at this point, that this is a time, Gemini, that's so much about these larger existential questions. Since 2020, Saturn has been in your ninth. And the ninth is about, it's, well, on a very kind of surface level, it's higher education. It's foreign travel or long distance travel, it's religion, it's law. But on a deeper level, the ninth is where we form our view of the world and our view of us in the world. And so Saturn has been saying to you since 2020, what do you believe in? What's your truth? What's your mission? Why are you here? These sort of bigger questions. The thing about the ninth is that to try to answer these questions, you look outside of you. You hop on a plane, um, you read a book, you go to college or university, you, uh, you, you start to profess something. But then Gemini, um, there's, you know, Uranus is in your 12th. And so there's this dynamic energy that's happening between what you believe in and, and sort of your view of the world, but also this internal view of the world. The twelfth is spirituality. It's inner faith, inner truth, inner meaning. It's the search for answers that are not in a book. 
they're not on a plane in a, in a different country. They're not in a degree. They're within. They're without. So there's this sort of deeper need to, to go within right now, Gemini, and try to figure your life out on a way that perhaps a book can give you those answers, but perhaps a book, for example, can't give you those answers. And Uranus in your 12 is about awakening to the blind spots, um, opening up to the parts of you of, that you can't see about yourself or even see about the world because they exist outside of this physical reality. And this is all in advance of a solar eclipse that's going to be in your six. So this is really about getting you ready about getting your physical life organized, taking care of your health and wellness and really sitting in the command seat of life. I will say that Mercury, your planet, it's still in Libra. It's it's in your what's called your fifth sign. So this continues to be a time about play, um, self-expression, creativity. But with Mercury opposite Chiron this week, maybe there is a deeper pain point around friends and community and groups and society that's coming up. Cancer. Cancer. So Saturn is in your eighth. And I know we have been talking about this for the better part of two years. And, and you've probably been crossing out the days in your calendar as we get to March of 2023. So recap. Saturn is in your eighth sign. This is what I affectionately call being in the eighth room. Imagine that you live in a house, except this house is your astrology, and there is this one room that we avoid. Why? Because it makes us feel uncomfortable. Because it's a room that demands that we look inside of ourselves. We navigate themes around intimacy transformation, rebirth, um, looking into the shadow side of ourselves, looking into the shadow side of life. And even though this seems, um, let's say, like you don't want it, um, it's just that time in your personal astrology since 2020, where you've had to do a lot of growth and transformation on a deep emotional level. I know it's exhausting. The good news is that Saturn turning direct means that there's five more months of Saturn in your eighth. That said, that Saturn turning direct, it's a structural point in this larger story. And to go back to June 4th and to see how there is a connection between Saturn turning direct in October, Saturn turning retrograde back in June. And then you can go back to October of 2021 or May of 2021 when Saturn did a retrograde and direct and maybe even going back into 2020. And at this point, you know, you're so close to the end, you are transformed. You are not the same person that you were in 2020. And maybe what Saturn is saying to you this weekend is to really take stock of what that is. And especially as you are on the heels of a Scorpio solar eclipse, it's like, who are you at this point? Because that's the thing about Saturn going through or any sort of a longer transit through the eighth is that that sense of identity is transformed. I don't mean identity as in like that, that truth of who you are identity, but that sense of how we express who we are, the deepening of who we are, and sometimes having to you know, dust ourselves off because the, 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 the time in the eighth has really impacted us and taken out a lot from us but you are you know wrapping up your 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 time in the eighth and then you know we have uh, uranus for you Aqu uh, of course she's cancer is in your 11th so this is sort of the story that's happening around power control vulnerability but also friends and community and trust and the future and looking ahead and um, maybe opening up to a very different future than you thought you were gonna have um, because you have done a lot of the work over the past couple of years. Leo, my, my fellow fixed sign, Leo, just your friendly reminder that we are in eclipse season. This eclipse is going to be in the base of your chart, your sign of home and family. So you are maybe gearing up for a move, maybe a change in your household, maybe people are moving in, moving out. Something about family, the past, memories, and emotional core. 
But that's the thing, Leo. That's the thing about being a fixed sign. So much happening in the other fixed signs. You know, you've got Saturn turning direct in your seventh of relationships. This has been two years of building partnership and relationship, and more than two years at this point. And what do you have to show for it? And that's the thing about relationships. We immediately think romantic relationships. And of course, the seventh is, is about, you know, or not about one of the places that we find romantic relationship. But the seventh reminds us that as humans, we are social creatures. But we are not meant to do things all alone, even though you might be the most self-sufficient Leo in the world. And Saturn is saying you need people because people, whether it's an intimate partnership, whether it's friends and community, I realize that's another part of the chart, but this is a, d a very relational time for you and relationships on bare minimum about creating balance in your life. So the past couple of years have been very structural, but the past couple of years have also taught you a lot of deep lessons. And maybe there has been a serious relationship or maybe a, a relationship has ended. But Saturn actually, despite uh, the reputation, loves relationships. Saturn's exalted in Libra. So Saturn is, we would say in astrology, accidentally dignified while it's going through your seventh. So this is a time where, you know, as Saturn says to you, what have you learned? You know, maybe relationships are you know, structurally sound. They have to be structurally sound. Then there's Uranus and Uranus, you know, Saturn is pinging off Uranus and Uranus is in your sign of career. And of course, every Leo is going to live this time differently. But I know a lot of Leos that have made major career changes over the past four years. And, and Uranus is in the middle of Taurus. So you are in the middle of the story, Leo. You don't, we haven't gotten to the end of Uranus's time in Taurus. And that's where we're gonna really see what has been changing and transforming in your professional life since 2018, 2019. But there's this dynamic about relationships, about responsibilities, around um, duties, boundaries, um, maybe even the duties to the people in our life. Um, and so, as, you know, so your planet is the sun, it's in Libra right now. Um, Libra is your third, so this has been a little bit of a you know social flirty, especially you know Sun and Venus together in your third, but the Sun makes a square to Pluto this week, and so this is not just a structural time for you, Leo. It's also a time of reformation, and all this is in preparation for a solar eclipse on October twenty fifth. Virgo, promise I won't forget Libra. Um, famous last words. So Virgo, Mercury is your planet, it's in Libra. Libra is your second sign of money and income. So bare minimum, this has been a past couple of weeks about really looking at your human life and, and sort of roof over your head, money in the bank, um, resources, stuff. You don't have to buy things, uh, Virgo, but certainly as human beings, we need stuff. Um, we need the basic resources of life. And to another side of that, what is the value of these things? You know, is it valuable for you to buy all these things or is it valuable for you to keep the things that you have? Maybe that sense of value also brings you to self-worth. What am I worth? Am I worth making investments into myself, making investments into my life? Investments is not just money, it's also time. The time that we spend really cultivating and creating a, a grounded um, and anchored human life. I say human life because we're really talking about element earth and the second house is an earth house. The second sign is an earth sign for you. Um, even though it's Le uh, Libra, which is air, um, hopefully you're following me. So we have to take care of our earthly stuff right now, Virgo. Mercury is making opposition to Chiron, so there may be a little bit of an ache around value and worth, security, trust, stability. Am I safe? Am I safe with somebody else? Do I have everything that I need? Um, is, is the other shoe going to drop? And maybe that's real, or actually maybe it's just um, a part of that emotional stuff that needs to be let go of. That said, Saturn is turning direct in your sixth sign. And not every Virgo lived this story, but there have been a few Virgos that have come into my um, my work as one-on-one as -on -one clients that did have health challenges 
over the past couple of years. Uh, there was, there, you know, maybe they broke a bone or maybe they needed to really uh, take care of their physical being. So I'm saying this because Saturn is coming up to the last stretch in Virgo and Saturn is like, all right, show me, show me what you've learned. Have you learned to take care of your physical being better? To prioritize, that's the thing about value and time and investment is that sometimes that value and investment doesn't extend to our physical health. And that's often a conversation I have with clients. They, you know, the, the, the career is falling apart and they're like, but also my body's falling apart. I don't get it because they're both linked even, you know, in a holistic perspective. So don't forget to neglect your, your physical being. It could be something as simple as really setting aside time and ritual. I get up, I brush my teeth, I take the dog out, I take a shower. I've caught, and these seem very mundane, but this is the thing. Our life needs structures. And even though Saturn is in Aquarius and Aquarius is the large structures of our life, it's really pointing to Virgo and saying, this is about the small structures in your life, your, your sense of schedule, your daily duties and responsibilities, how you take care of your physical being, and how do you take care of your physical surroundings, cleaning, purifying. And for some Virgos, um, despite being the reputation of being clean, this has been a time to really detoxify either your physical being or your physical life. So don't forget, Saturn is really um, you know, wanting to show some progress. Uranus is in your ninth, and so a lot of the, you know, the push and pull that's been happening is some of these deeper beliefs about yourself or beliefs about what's possible or believe in beliefs about what you should be spending your time on. And Saturn's like, actually, maybe you should be spending your time on something else. I know we all talk about work-life balance, but there's something to be said about that. And if it's all work, it's all earth, and, and there's not enough to sort of support that earthly life, then the whole thing collapses. And then our body collapses. And we're like, why am I tired? Um, but this all prepares you for a solar eclipse in Scorpio, Virgo. Uh, for you, uh, that eclipse is going to be in your third, which is about boys, communication, ideas, information. We'll talk about that later. Libra, I didn't forget. <laughs> um, Libra, I'm so sorry about last week. Um, it is the last week of your birthday season. And if this is your birthday week, happy birthday. Um, Venus, which is your planet, it's now wrapping up its time in Libra. So it's been a little bit of a homecoming the past three, four weeks while it's been in Libra. And Venus and Libras, I like Venus and Libra. It's about beauty and charm and grace and manners and relationship and Yes, you know, the veneer of things. Um, and maybe when Venus goes into Scorpio this week on Sunday, October 23rd, you're going to start to go into what is underneath all this nice veneer. But you're going to get a little bit of a hint because as Venus passes out of its time in Libra, it's going to make a square to Pluto and Capricorn. Do keep in mind that Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. I realize that's a very long time. Starting next year, Pluto is going to start to transition out of Capricorn. Um, and by the end of 2024, yes, 2024, Pluto will be completely out of Capricorn. Why am I highlighting this? Because Capricorn is the, the part of your chart that talks about base, home, roots, foundation, family, the past and sometimes the very toxic past that we have with our family members and other things that have happened in our life. And so Pluto being Pluto is like, oh, over the last 14 years, I've been ripping out your foundation. I realize it's a very strong thing to say, but as Venus pings off of Pluto this week, really pay attention to these deeper emotional points that are coming up. Is it right now? Is it 2022 or is what you're feeling actually something very old and Pluto is like oh hey I'm trying to actually take this out of your your pipes so the stuff that you are experiencing this week maybe it needs to be released maybe it's very old maybe it's sort of this last stretch of all this deep work you've been doing in home and family household past ancestors um, since 2008 
Keep in mind that you're on the cusp of a solar eclipse that's going to happen in your sign of money and income, value and worth. We'll talk about that next week. Um, but things are going to start to shift, especially again as Venus gets out of Libra. It goes into Scorpio at the end of this week. Um, then there's Uranus. And this is something I feel like I've had this conversation a couple times recently with Libra clients. Uranus is in your eighth. So this has been a time about really opening up to parts of yourself that maybe you haven't been open up to. Maybe it's been uncomfortable. Maybe it's through events that have forced you to look within. And so there's this push and pull that's happening this week as Saturn turns direct in your fifth about self, um, identity, individuality, creativity, self-expression about the darker sides of self and self-sabotage and maybe how taking yourself and taking your talent seriously first means looking at the parts of yourself that actually go against taking yourself seriously. Scorpio, happy almost birthday, Scorpio. So the sun arrives in Scorpio, I think it's like 6 a.m., you know, 623, 630, whatever, a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Eastern, yeah, Eastern Standard Time, and look, clocks change in November. Um, and, and so if your birthday's on the 23rd, happy early birthday, Scorpio. But it's the last week of Libra season, and Libra season for you is typically the time when you have to go within. It's the end of your personal zodiac calendar, and so it's about releasing the past, releasing old cycles, reflecting on the journey since your last birthday, and preparing for the new time. Mars is your planet. It continues to be in your eighth. Um, so this is a little bit of an emotionally pointed time, and especially as you go into your birthday season, an emotionally pointed birthday season. You are on the cusp of a solar eclipse, and if your birthday is on the 25th, plus or minus a, a couple of days, it's going to be a powerful new year for you. We'll talk about that next week. Um, in the meantime, you've got Saturn turning direct in your sign of home and family. And Scorpio, I want you to go back and look at what has been happening in your home environment since 2020. Have you made a move? Has somebody moved in or somebody moved out? Uh, has parents or family needed more of your attention. Maybe you are asking yourself, where is home and who is home? And as Saturn turns direct, maybe you are going a little bit more deeper into having an answer to that question. As Saturn turns direct, it makes a, a nice fun square to Uranus in your relationship sign. And since 2018, 2019, Uranus has been really shifting and shaking things up in relationships. I had a client, she's older than my mom, um, or was because my mom's passed, but this is a friendly reminder, Scorpio, that this can happen at any stage in your life. And you can be in your mid seventies and somebody comes into your life. She, her husband of like 40 years passed and she didn't even think that she would ever meet anybody again. And lo and behold, She's Scorpio rising and Uranus is in her seventh. So not that Uranus in the seventh is about like new relationship necessarily coming in, but it's about the awakening and the redefining relationship in your life. And for some Scorpios, that does mean people coming into their life, whether it's a romantic relationship or people who are the avatar of Uranus. They're just trying to open up your eyes. I think the hardest thing for Scorpio has been that there, it's, it's, it's a sign that's so much about control and the astrology is so much about not being in control right now. So how do you open up Scorpio? How do you get uncomfortable? How do you get intimate? And how do you allow people into your life? Um, Sagittarius. So Sag, you're not feeling it the same way that everybody else is. That's the thing about the mutable signs that most of the action is happening with Cardinal and fixed. But that said, Jupiter, your planet, it's in Aries, and it's actually next week going to go back into Pisces, the sign of home and family. But this has been a time that's been so much about you reconnecting with what makes you, 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 your creativities, your passions, your talents. But we'll talk about when you're on Jupiter changes signs next week. That said, Saturn is turning direct in your third sign of voice and communication. And this has been almost three years of you taking your voice seriously. What are you saying? What are you choosing? The thing about this part of the chart is that it's also about weighing your options and making hopefully informed, mature decisions. Uranus, on the other hand, is in your sixth. 
And this is going to be different for every Sag or Sag rising. The six is about health and wellness, your relationship with your physical body, your relationship with your immediate surroundings, your sense of, of organization and plans and um, keeping your life running on a schedule. And it's quite possible that your day-to-day -day life looks very different than it did in 2018 and 2019 when Uranus first answered. And for some Sagittarius's, their relationship with their health and wellness is very different than it was four years ago. Maybe they've made dietary changes. Maybe they started getting physical exercise. Maybe it's an emotional and spiritual shift because that's, that's, that's the thing. And the six, it's like the command seat. We have to sit in the command seat of life. And it's really hard to live life when there's a part of us that doesn't want to be here, doesn't feel safe here. And I realize that that's real. And the, how do you hear, heal that? How do you, we, how do you take care of yourself so you can actually be physically present in this life? Um, but see what's happening. And maybe, um, especially with Saturn and square Uranus, this is a week of major choices or maybe seeing things very differently. It's my dog. Um, Capricorn. Um, Capricorn. So Saturn is your planet. And we've been talking about this for a while. It's been in your second sign of money and income. So you're rounding out a nearly three years in total time of redefining Saturn, learning Saturn about the material world. This includes your basic material needs and maybe your relationship with money, income, investment, spending, um, material stability and security has greatly shifted over the past few years. Every Capricorn is different. For some Capricorns, this has been about really making personal investments, building income for other Capricorns. It's like, I've had to actually really work on this part of my life. I've had to really see what is the true value of things. What do I really need? Especially as let's say inflation, things are more expensive. Maybe you have to get very clear about what you need to be spending your money on. So Saturn turns direct and Saturn says, what have you learned? Even though Saturn is your planet, Saturn is asking you, what, what have you learned? So Saturn, it's a structural point in the year, and I, and I invite you, um, Capricorn, to go back and reflect on what was happening around June 4th when Saturn turned retrograde. Saturn turns direct in what's called a square to Uranus. Um, Uranus is in your fifth. So this is sort of this sense of self-worth, identity, identity, or worth of self. Wait, I said that. Worth of identity, expression of identity, with the things that you're building as an expression of who you are, fertility, security, and who you thought you were in 2018, 2019 versus who you are now, and perhaps even who you're going to become by 2025, 2026, when Uranus leaves the sign. Do keep in mind that you're on the cusp of a solar eclipse. That solar eclipse is in Scorpio, which is your third sign of voice, communication, ideas, information, the choices that you make. And it's a very powerful solar eclipse that's going to activate Saturn square Uranus. So you're probably going to feel this one um, um, Capricorn and it's probably going to be some sort of pivot as you go into next week and even into November. Aquarius. Um, Aquarius, Saturn is your planet. So it's been in Aquarius, your sign, since um, December 17th of 2020. There was a preview from the end of March 2020 to July 1st of 2020. Every Aquarius has been experiencing this differently. I will say from a very traditional, astro I'm my traditional astrologer hat on for a moment, from a traditional astrology standpoint, it's been hard on Aquarius because it's in the sign of the sun. Perhaps it's been diminished vitality. Maybe you felt tired. It's been hard. You felt time, karma, and aging all more acutely. It's real. Even, I'm, even though I'm a modern astrologer, we can't neglect the traditional points. So that said, Saturn, this has been a time of new beginnings in your life over the past couple of years and new beginnings that are sort of like this thud and you know starting this big new chapter of your life because the next time that Saturn is going to come back to Aquarius is 30 years from now. I'm sorry, that's a, 
I don't, I don't even know, we're all going to be robots and cyborgs by then. Um, but that said, Saturn is laying a groundwork for Pluto's arrival in Aquarius um, next year. That is a whole other conversation for another time. Um, but you know, pay attention to what Saturn is revealing, asking of you, how this is connected to June 4th, uh, approximately when Saturn turned retrograde. It is making a square to Uranus. So Uranus is in your fourth of home and family. It's quite possibly that your living situation and your household looks very different than it did in 2018, 2019. I've known a lot of Aquariuses that have made major moves. They've moved across country. Um, I know other Aquariuses that have sort of replanted themselves someplace, made a home, made a family, um, or maybe there have been major shifts in the home environment. But this is a little bit of a big pressure week for you, uh, Aquarius. Do take care of yourself. This is all in advance of a solar eclipse in Scorpio. Scorpio is your 10th sign of career. So this is going to likely be a, even, even if it's not career, it's sort of your place in the world, the title after your name, your duties and responsibilities on a, on a larger level. So pay attention what's going on. Look for the story. Take care of yourself, Aquarius. Finally, Pisces. So Pisces, you know, you have Saturn in your 12th. And this is something that we've been talking about off and on over the past couple of years. Saturn in your 12th represents the end of a 30 year chapter. I know it's kind of crazy to wrap our heads around that. But Saturn went into the 12th in 2020, it will leave the 12th March 7th, 2023. It is symbolically as if you are going through everything that you own, the boxes of your life, and deciding what do you want to, to take and what do you want to get rid of. And for some Pisces, this has been very literal. I had somebody say, oh my God, I'm cleaning out my garage of like 30 years of stuff. You want to be very conscientious about what you are bringing with you into March of 2023. Because the idea is that the 12th, it's a very liminal space. On a, on a mundane level, you are releasing the past, releasing your attachments, your physical attachments to things. If something comes with you into March of 2023, it's with you. It comes into the new life. Saturn in the 12th is also a deeply existential and even spiritual time. These, these meditations on faith and meaning, what does my life mean? Why am I here? I realize Pisces has a reputation for being a very spiritual sign, but doesn't mean that they don't go within and sort of ask themselves these deep questions. For others, it's a need to explore the, the world outside of this world, because at the heart, that's what the 12th is. It represents the world that we can't see, whether it's our dreams and our illusions, our blind spots, or the, the, the spiritual world that we can't see. So for some Pisces, this has been a very deeply spiritual time, very mystical time. Um, but Saturn turning direct is like, okay, what have you learned? What are you still holding on to from a, from a place of ego and earthly attachment that you maybe don't want to hold on to anymore? All this is paying off of Uranus in your third. This has been a, been a four years of awakening your voice. Keep in mind that voice is two things both the words out of your mouth pisces but also the energy behind those words so it's it's digging into these deeper points um these deeper emotional points i will say jupiter your planet next week it's going to go back into pisces hey you're pisces we'll talk about that this week um and you do have some mercury aspects this week and especially as Mercury, which is a relationship plant for you, makes an, an opposition to Chiron. It sort of brings up these deeper questions about value and worth in relationships. Look, I didn't forget a single sign. I really, no, I didn't. Otherwise, you, would have, you guys would have told me. Um, but that's your look at the astrology of October 17th through 2020, 2023, 2022, geez. Don't forget to join me for my two hour webinar this Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can still register to get the recorded video, uh, even if you can't join live. A lot of people do that. I'm gonna 
do a deep dive in eclipses and hopefully make you love eclipses as much and make you love Saturn as much as I do. And then what do these eclipses mean for each of the 12 signs? So we got a lot to cover. Um, the link is in the show notes, the eclipses of October and November 2022. You can also get to it from my website. If you're watching on Instagram, it's in the bio link. Um, and I and I hope to see you all there. So have a great week. I appreciate you all. I thank you. Follow me online at empoweringastrology.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Spotify, YouTube, all the things. Um, until next week when we talk about Scorpio season uh, and a Scorpio solar eclipse. Take care. Bye.